Hello everyone. Welcome back to the next episode of Antenna Enclave. Today even before discussing the implications of antennas, let's see uh, a new interesting story, okay? So I want to tell you talk about the story and then we'll get back to how exactly can I relate that to antennas. Okay? So this is a story here. Elephant and the six blind men. I'm sure many would have seen the story and uh, heard about it. So basically what it is showing is um, six blind men and an elephant there. So they are told to observe that object and find out what they look like. So each one is touching a part of an elephant and for them how does it look like is so a person who is touching the tail uh, feels like oh it's a rope and the person who is touching the side of the elephant looks like oh maybe it's a wall so as such someone who is touching the ears um, assumes that it's fan okay someone who is uh, touching the tusk um, thinks that it's a spear okay and someone who is touching the trunk um, assumes that it's a snake okay and someone who is touching the leg uh, feels that it's a tree okay are they all wrong? I mean, definitely no, right? Each one is correct in its own way. The only notion was when everything was pooled, combined together, then uh, understanding that it's an elephant could be analyzed with this. Yeah. So why did I even tell this story? Okay. And what has antenna got to do with this? Are antenna like elephants? Uh, can we think about it? So what does it basically uh, tell me is, can I think of antenna? I mean, if, if a person who is not uh, looking at the structure, so maybe he is, he is not aware if there's an antenna there, he just wants to analyze a small part of it. So what can antenna look like? So who is an antenna? What other names or what other faces of antennas can I look like? Can I see? Can I see the antenna as a radiator? So an antenna designer, if he is designing an antenna, all antenna designer who seeks it. So for him, it would be like I'm designing the radiator, which will just throw the energy into free space. Okay, what kind of pattern would I get? So would I get an omnidirectional one? Would I get a directional one? So for him, for a radiator antenna designer, the perspective of him to see an antenna would be just as a radiator. Okay, so probably he would be thinking about how much is the current coming till the open ends. So you remember the concept of leakage current, right? And how much is the current which is getting leaked and how much is the radiation happening? So for an antenna designer, he is seeing the antenna in a perspective of radiator. Okay, and next comes is what does a system engineer look, uh, see the antenna as? So for him, it's a transducer. So he would see the an antenna as probably a device which would convert an energy from one form to another form. Okay, that's a transducer. So why he is most important to look at antenna in a transducer perspective is, so a converting energy one from one form to another is, yes, very important. And that's what uh, antenna does. But for him, he is more bothered about what is the gain. Okay. So what is the gain of antenna so that how much energy from here gets converted to the other form. So for a system engineer, he looks at it as a transducer perspective. Okay. What's the other thing? So coming back to an antenna scientist, so who is seeking some enlightenment with respect to antenna. So he would probably see that it's an energy converter. So energy which is bounded in a guided medium is now getting propagated in an unguided medium or a wireless scenario. So how is this beautifully happening from a bounded thing which is in a wired medium into a propagating I mean three dimensional a two dimensional to a three dimensional one is what an antenna scientist would be fascinated fascinated to know about uh, the antenna concept. So he would be looking at antenna as an energy converter. Okay. So the last thing what an, how an antenna could be seen is a transmission line extension. So for an antenna engineer. So what he would probably see is how well should I 
taper or extend the lines of a wave guide so that I have a very good and exact impedance matching between the source and the antenna there. So we already have seen the source so for maximum power transfer to happen the source and the load should be perfectly matched right. So only if this happens uh, there will be good impedance matching. So what do we do? The waveguide now gets tapered. So it gets tapered as a horn antenna, it gets tapered as a dipole antenna. We, we discussed about this. So for an antenna engineer, he sees how exactly, how much should I extend it, how much should I taper it, so that the impedance between the antenna and the source that's who is throwing out, I mean, who is sending out the energy is perfectly matched. Okay. So how is this story? feels exciting so it's just basically that i have shown antenna a different phases of antenna so i can predict so if i look into antenna only as a radiator my my whole research concentrates about how would the radiation pattern be how much would be the beam area what would be the power density what would be the solid angle what would be the directivity so those perspectives so if i am dealing about uh, how exactly the I should tune the gain. So gain and directivity are two very important things. Directivity for now if you assume is a very ideal case. Okay. Gain comes when we consider losses. So when I look at antenna in a perspective of a transducer, energy is converted from one perspective, one air form to another form. So when this is happening, the losses should not happen there. Power radiated, uh, sorry, power transmitted and the power radiated should be same. So only then the gain will be equal to directivity. So directivity is like God, ideal case. Gain is when I consider the practical losses also. Okay. So when I see this um, uh, transducer as a part of it, so the gain comes into picture, the practical scenario for him. So he will be more bothered about how much, uh, since the energy is getting converted from this to this. So how well should I bother about uh, tackling the gain or the losses which is happening inside the antenna. Okay. And for an energy converter, the scientist who looks in a very, uh, very passionate perspective of antenna who sees the energy which is in a two-dimensional bounded thing goes into the three-dimensional uh, uh, wireless scenario, free space. So how do I cope with that? And for the last one, transmission line extension, impedance matching is very, very, very important. So unless this doesn't happen, I will not be able to either receive or transmit the good amount of energy which I need. So impedance matching is required. So this antenna engineer bothers about how much, how will be the transmission line extended so that I get. So all put together forms a best team or I can simply take a single part of antenna as a radiator, as a transducer, as a transmission line extension and work upon the antenna also. So it's as good as antenna is now uh, uh, somewhere related to a blind man story. So each one of the blind men is looking at different, a, a small part of antenna. When I combine everything, the miracle of antenna happens. Okay. So that's about a uh, very simple, but uh, very interesting and uh, very uh, exciting story for me. So which I wanted to share with you. Antennas are elephants. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much.